this is Derek Hansen for strengthpowerspeed.com and I'd like to welcome you to our eighth episode of our performance concepts chat series. In this episode we're speaking to an athlete, an athlete that I've known since 2003 who's uh, basically had what I consider an amazing career uh, through a multitude of sports. Uh, his name is Paul Chang and like I said I first met him in 2003. He was finishing off uh, a football career in college, uh, embarking on a a pro football career, and I had helped him with some some aspects of speed and strength, and you know, uh, I think it helped. But uh, more importantly, I uh, developed a friendship with Paul, and really got to follow his career from there and, with amazement. So, in this episode, we talk to Paul about his youth and growing up uh, as a, an Asian an Asian youth athlete and finding out that really his parents didn't really see what he was was aiming for and why you know they wanted him to have academic success and they didn't see the value in having a sports career so you know Paul definitely uh, showed them that uh, he could make his way in the world of sport and going from high school to college to pro football we cover that in this episode um, but also there's some strange twists uh, as well that we cover and um, I think you're really going to enjoy his story see some of the recurring themes in terms of him facing adversity uh, him you know moving forward maybe sidestepping a couple of times and uh, just finding a different path and his nickname you know when he was fighting was uh, the typhoon so again, we've called this the path of the typhoon, and it, it, it has been an amazing path, and you'll really enjoy um, the way he tells the stories. So, you know, I hope you enjoy part one of our talk with Paul Chang. So Paul, I really wanted to get you on the podcast because we've had uh, a lot of different people on who are deeply tied into the the coaching, the preparation, strength and conditioning, science. And I wanted to talk to an athlete. And the first person I thought of was you because not only were you an athlete, but you have this broad experience. And if we go through, and we're going to talk about all this, like in terms of like, you know, college football, pro football, uh, bobsleigh, boxing, mixed martial arts, stunt work and acting in Hollywood, which is, which is athletic too, that, you know, they don't, they can't, pull somebody off the street and say like, you know, jump off of this car. Um, WWE, you, you had some involvement there. Arena football uh, in China. And we're going to go through all of this. And, and the thing for me is I want to talk to you about, one, what motivated you to do all this um, and keep going? Because it's very easy for somebody to do a sport and then go, ah, I'm going to retire and just become a regular person. And you've you've obviously... Uh, resisted that temptation or you've just, you know, things have just worked out for you. So I, I think this is really interesting for people to hear about how you've worked from sport to sport. Uh, and obviously you have some natural talent that's helped. Um, but, you know, I, I want to go through this and I want people to hear your story because I think it's a great story. And, 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 and how old are you right now? 38. 38 years old. So Ladies and gentlemen, there's a lot of great stories in here. So we're going to start from the beginning. And if you can give me some background on, and when you were a child uh, growing up in Toronto and, and what, you know, what sports did you start with? What encouragement did you get from your parents? And just how did it start? Okay. Um, well, I'm, I, I'm actually, I grew up in, uh, I was born in Taipei, Taiwan. And then I grew up there until about age nine. So about nine years old, I immigrated to Canada, um, uh, and then I, in a uh, Chinese culture, it's not a very, uh, uh, I guess, uh, I, it's not very sports oriented. Sure. So I'm half Chinese. Yes, like I, 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 totally, I understand. I get yeah. it. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure you get it. So it's like, you know, we've been, we, be, we, we, uh, my parents pushed me to, uh, succeed academically and, and, and that's about it. And then when I came to Canada, I wasn't very physically fit and, um, I was quite, uh, chubby and and just didn't know too much what was going on didn't speak english and go to school people would pick on you because you kind of don't speak the language and then i was like a pudgy short kid with big glasses <laughs> yeah so you know and then and i didn't feel very athletic but not very confident and then i started figuring 
and then we kind of move on, uh, move on a little bit. Elementary school still not, nothing particular, but I started growing. Okay. I started growing, so I was like, wow, this is, and I'm starting getting bigger. So I was like, oh, people are not picking on me as much. And then I found. Sports. So just just the physicality, Physic- you you yeah. recognize yeah. that there's something and, to it. Yeah, and then I, I I wrestled. The first sport I ever picked up was wrestling. I wrestled, I think, in grade when I was in grade four, grade four and grade five, just so, uh, something something I did. And then it was like, and I started figuring out I was a pretty strong kid. And then you know it gave me a little bit more confidence. Mm-hmm. And then just you know my English got better. Things were got a, a, a lot better for me. And then I started. I watch football on TV. Okay. And then I was like, I saw the Buffalo Bills. And then all the Super Bowls we lost. Oh <laughs> and it was just like, and I just found, I just clicked. And that, that's all I ever wanted to do. And I was like, I went to my mom and dad. I was like, I never saw this sport because it's not in Asia. Uh, a pro, uh, American football is not a big sport. Uh, not not a big sport outside of North America. Yes. Uh, especially about 25, was it about 25 years ago? Yeah, yeah that long yeah, ago. Yeah, that long ago. So my parents, uh, and then I, I just w- I wanted to get a football so bad. And my mom and dad would be like, no, what is that? Mm-hmm. What is that? Yeah. You know, there's a basketball, there's a soccer ball, there's a baseball. What kind of ball is that? So I'm kind of like, it's a football. And it's like, no, football is a soccer ball. No, 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 it's a football. And then, I, I, and then it was just like, it was kind of always wanted to do it, but they wouldn't let me. And then until high school mm-hmm. and then I went to go try out for the team and then things were like and I was pretty tall I came back from California visiting some friends and then I grew and I was like six foot tall like 200 pounds in grade nine wow so I was like pretty big pretty big kid so I tried out for the football team and then I was okay but again still not very aggressive not you know r- relatively timid did you have good coaches back then? Was there anybody who kind of encouraged you and said, oh, "Hey, yes," and just like I've had, like uh, my coach, Coach Mativier, uh, like uh, a coach, a track coach, mm-hmm. and he coached me on football. He kind of like it was a a, a a mentor for me. I had a few like a uh, few coaches. There was a few coaches throughout my high school career that really kind of helped me bring me along. And then I never knew some of the stuff they would teach me. And then I would still use, you know, my old wrestling coach, Mr. Orsi, taught me a double leg takedown. And then that was what I did all the time. And then I still, I, sometimes I joke with him. I was like, did you see that? And then he's like, yeah, I watched that. I was like, nice double leg. I was like, oh, I know, I, I know who, who taught me that. So yeah, just like, and then, you know, with my football coaches, there was like uh, several football coaches that kind of really, really helped me. And then, kind of, and then I got, you know, I, but again, I was just like, it was a process because I wasn't very aggressive. And then, you know, and then it wasn't one of those things that my parents weren't like, I yeah. didn't have parents that yeah. were like, Hey, coming to every game, coming saying, to every game. Come on, son, you got to do this. I'm yeah. like, Hey, I, I, my parents never watched me play. Not, not till I got to the pros. Yeah. I actually, my dad came to one college game. I see it on my last one. Cause I asked him, I asked him to, <laughs> but, um, yeah, it was just, I know it was something I drove for myself because I saw that on TV and then I wanted to be, I, that's what I wanted to do. And then it just inspired me. And then I just wanted to keep going and going. I went to the gym. I, I like, we lived at my community center. I lived it. I, I was like work. Neither I was going to practice or I, I was at the community center lifting weights on my own. Yeah. You Nobody, didn't have any guidance. Well, and I had a few people, you know, there was a few people, like the tra- some of the trainers kind of at the gym that kind of taught me. And we're right by York University. Mm-hmm. So there would be athletes sometimes coming through. And then I would get to pick their brains. Okay. So we had a couple like uh, York University football players. And then uh, they would come. And then I, that I met at our little un- underground gym. And then we'd be like t- talking and they helped me out. And I remember one time there was a, a I think I was in grade 11. Like a a defensive end um, from, I think his name, his, I never forget his name, Reinhard Keller. He was a s- second round pick. He came out of Wilfrid Laurier University. He was an all Canadian. And then I just thought it was so cool. And the kid, the guy was like super nice. And then he was like, and then I, I was playing defensive line at the time. And then at grade 11, I really didn't have that jump yet. And the guy was, and I remember him t- telling me, hey, I'm going to be around here for about two weeks. So if you come here at this time every day, I'll show you something. And then I would go there every day at that time. 
I read after school, and then I would just like for the for the I think it was two weeks. He showed me something new every day, and I brought it into my college, my high school season, and I started getting good. Yep. And finally, I was like, you know, I wasn't really much in uh, not nothing, grade eleven, you know, grade nine, grade ten, nothing special. Grade eleven started, you know, I made an all star team in uh, grade eleven. Uh, at the end of the grade 11 season and then after grade 12 I started I didn't get to play high school football because no actually no grade 12 I played and I, in my last year because I, in Ontario we had a th- grade 13 at mm-hmm. the time I didn't get to play because we didn't have a high school team and that oh, cost wow. me my football scholarship I believe that kind of cost me a division 1 scholarship wow. to be honest because I ended up having to play a community football um, but at in Toronto it's kind of like um it's like a midget, so it's under 19. And then we played in a, an Ottawa league, which featured, like, the competition, uh, they said, uh, was a, a very comparable to, to uh, Florida 4A because uh, uh, um, Jesse Palmer played in that league. The okay. Bachelor, the New yeah, York yeah, yeah, Giants yeah, yeah. quarterback. Yeah. So I got to play. I played against him nice. a few games. And then it was he went to University of Florida and started and all that stuff. So that was kind of... So uh, I kind of saw the benchmark where we had to be at. Okay. So we because we saw like the number one recruit in the whole entire country, a five star quarterback and stuff like that, right? But there's obviously something that sets you apart, and somebody recognized that you had some talent. Yeah. And, yes. And then that allowed you to move on to the next. Yes, we had these. Uh, I guess in Ontario back at the time, it was this guy called Ron Dias, and I played for a team called the Mississauga Wolverines, coached by my, uh, my coach John Simons, which he was a fantastic, one of the best football coaches I've ever had. And then, um, yeah, and I played in this uh, midget league with all these guys. That's like basically kind of an all-star team. Like I think it ended up on um, uh, the Mississauga Wolverines. Sorry, he. It was like our team ended up having. I think, of the twenty-two start of the twenty-two guys that started, I think we probably had like fifteen guys go play at university. Wow. Oh. And then we had our running back was Kerry Carter, so he. He was uh he, he th- played three years with the Seahawks and won a couple of great cups with the Elouettes and stuff like that. So we like it was a pretty stacked like a pretty crazy team. And what positions were you playing I, predominantly? I played defensive end. Okay. I played defensive end, and then that was uh that's what I played that's uh, defensive end defensive tackle in high school. And then my body started catching up, so I was getting to be about two hundred fifty pounds. And then my mom finally started coming around, so I was begging her every year to send me to these football camps. So she ended up sending me to University of Michigan camp. And then I, we were going to this, uh, all these, uh, uh, Ron Dias had um, had these evaluation camps back in the day when uh, NCAA, uh, NCAA Div 1 teams just started coming back to ca- uh, up to Canada about 20 years ago, mm-hmm. 25 years ago, I guess. No, sorry, but 20 something years ago. Mm-hmm. So they were just coming, it was just kind of, you know, Back then, it was rare, like in 1990, before 2000, rare for um, NCAA teams to come up to uh, Canada and snap, uh, get kids. But now, you know, it's very, it's a, it's coming. It's, a, yeah. it's coming. It's yeah. all, it, uh, it's a, it's a common thing. Yeah, and so I'm, I'm sure it's, it's a lot easier now that people can post their video up and oh anybody yeah. can see. Oh, it I still and... remember having to make a cassette <laughs> and sending my cassette. I remember my VH having to set. Get my get a dub of a VHS tape and then wrap it up and then send it to yeah. the school that wants it, and then and then you just worry the quality is not good enough and then oh now you just post it online and then share it and you got like eight hundred views. Yeah, it's crazy. Yeah. You know, I, you know, back in the day, I, I still remember wrapping my getting those bubble envelopes, get saving my allowance or whatever or my job, <laughs> selling video games at the flea market so I could buy these envelopes and get these video cassettes so I could send them out. Yeah. Yeah. So, so, def- so definitely easier, yeah. but obviously you found a place to play in, in, and you yes. did, you did want to play American football. Yes, you yes, yes, yeah. yes. I yeah. wanted to play American football really badly. And then, um, yes. And I, I, I thought I was going to get a division one scholarship and then, but, uh, I had a f- story, funny story. Um, I went to university of Michigan camp, um, uh, at the university of Michigan. Nice. That was like my dream. I wanted to be a Wolverine. That was the, like my thing. And then um, you and Tom Brady. Oh yeah! Oh, I wish. <laughs> but anyways, um, so I th- so it was my grade twelve going to grade third. Uh, my grade twelve going to grade thirteen year, and I was like, and I, I had a great camp. 
everything was going great. Wow. And then I got invited to their top prospects. Um, they had like, uh, they pulled all the best kids because they had a, 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 a smokehouse, they called it. So we had to race 40s. And I didn't know how to run at the time. So I'm kind of sitting there just like, I'm racing all the top, like, like a bunch of four star, five star recruits from the US. Yeah. I didn't run very well. Okay. And then I think I'm posted like a five three, something ridiculous. Okay. And then my division one dreams are like shattered. Just from that. But yeah, just from because nobody knew about me. And then I went there, I tore up a camp. Yeah. I was doing really well. And then I ran like a five three something, I think, or five two something, or something. I don't know. It wasn't good. And then well, that's interesting because the the NFL Combine is this week, right? So yeah, that's... I know that's that's why I'm saying it wasn't good. And then, but at the end of the camp, I still got this trophy, and I, I still remember. You still got that trophy? I still have this Miss University of Michigan trophy. Awesome. I went because there was a top prospects thing. They gave out like these top prospects trophies for the top whatever the top. 50 or top 20 there was like hundreds and hundreds of kids for every position yeah so they gave up a, a top position top position award so i got one and i was going up to get my award i was so excited because i was like wow i didn't think i ever get this it wasn't what a participation award yeah, i yeah, actually yeah, did yeah, really yeah. well i ha- still have this award my mom still has it actually no i have it in my house okay and then i walked up and then uh the coach at the time uh who uh it was, uh, I have a picture. I have a picture in my, but anyways, the, I still remember the defensive coordinator, Greg Madison. Yeah. And he was the defensive coordinator in Notre Dame, I think for like three or four, maybe four years ago. And I still remember this to this day. I went up to get my award and then head coach was turned, turned to him. He was like, Hey, who was that? I, I was walking away because I was so excited to get my award. Yeah. I didn't think I was going to get anything. Nobody ever gets anything. And I got this award. I was just walking away. He's like, don't bother, too slow. Oh, really? Yeah, that's what they said. I remember that. I almost, and then I, I was so hurt in my life. And then I just was like, and then I realized how important speed and athleticism and proper technique was at, at that moment in my life. Sure. Because I didn't, I've never practiced a 40. I never practiced any of this stuff. So I went and looked, and then I was playing football. And then all of a sudden I was like, Coach Mativier. He well, at the track coach, well, our track coach. Yeah, it's like, can you teach me how to do run? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then he took his time, and I never forget it. And I just made sure I can run. Wow. And I t- took the time, and I tr- ran with the track team, and you know, and I did whatever I had to do. Great. And then I I ran well yeah. after. I ran yeah. well, but it was kind of late because it was like grade twelve, you know, and then. Like when I went to that camp, like I had a few schools that would just like follow me around drooling because they knew they were like, we never heard of this kid. So this is, this kid could be in our packet pocket. And I kind of ran that bad time, which was my fault. And I believe every kid. Well, it's not your fault. It's, it's, yeah, it it was a situation, your circumstances where you didn't have anybody to teach you, right? No. Yeah. And then I, you know what? And I figured it out. That's why I'm just like for every athlete, you know, when you start figuring these realities out, go seek out. Go get help yep. and go try. Which is interesting because when we were working together, I never had a problem convincing you that sprint training was important. Yes. And yeah. that, I, it was from that moment ever. I, I'll never forget it. Um, I'll never forget it in my, the entire, for the mo- rest yeah. of my life. Walked up. It's your dream school. And you go, finally begged my mom for four years to get to this camp. And she paid the money. I had the best time. I, I and I, I beat I, I got to beat some of those four and five star recruits, and then and it was you're too slow. So did they? Uh, they never followed up with you. No, ever. You never... no, they they followed up a little bit. Okay, just to see how how things were going, but it wasn't like, you know, it, it was could have like, been something. They were like excited. Yeah, like if you I, ran four nine four. If I four, ran four nine, I'd probably be Tom Brady's teammate. <laughs> If I ran four nine that day, no offense, I'd probably be Tom Brady's teammate. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I believe that. Yeah, you know, I I did pretty well. I I believe I did pretty well, and a lot of coaches saw me that yeah. I did pretty well. And I remember I was like, I still remember. I think I was like number 
15 or no, or top, almost getting to the top 10 of the, of the D lineman of the whole country. Wow. And then all of a sudden I dropped to like 25 or something <laughs> crazy like that on a time. And then you're sitting there just like, oh my God, I don't know what I'm doing. But I figured it out and then I ran. Yeah. I, I, and it, it, I, I ran under five. I ran under yeah, five. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I did run under five. Well, it's interesting that, you know, I didn't know that story, honestly. But yeah, that, um, that's what I wanted to share. But that, yeah. that story happened. Because if you I, did go play with Tom Brady, maybe you wouldn't have done all this other not, stuff we're no, going to talk about. <laughs> probably not. Probably not. <laughs> okay. So you didn't get you didn't get picked up by Michigan, um, but you did get picked up by university. And, and, and what was what was that experience like? And Oh, I, I so yeah, I got and then you know, and then after you know, uh, getting myself exposed, going to these uh, combines and uh, big camps and stuff, and then you know, coaches are coming, come, coming, calling, and and then I wanted to play American football. That yeah. was uh, one of my big goals. So I had a co- few uh, NCAA Division two schools uh, co- uh, that, and then I had uh, I don't I don't remember. Uh, I think I had a couple schools that offered me visits. Like Ameri- uh, AIC American International College, I think some Ashland University or something like that. Sure. I, I, but something in Ohio, some and then a couple of div, div two schools, and then I was like, oh, but do I really? And then I thought to myself, am I gonna? And then these schools are offering maybe fifty or seventy five percent, and you're still like kind of out of pocket, yep. eight to ten thousand dollars US yep. minimum. And I'm kind of thinking to myself, so I want to play in the US. But what do I, what can I do? And then Simon Fraser came around, and we're pr- par- practicing, or we were playing NAIA at the time. Mm-hmm. And I'm kind of thinking to myself, and they offered me a scholarship. And I co- I'll never forget that day. Neither Coach Beaton that co- came to my house, sat in sat in my house, and didn't leave my house until he, I signed my letter of intent. Good. I Good. was like, yeah. I was like, you know what? How, how do you say no when a guy flies from Vancouver to Toronto, sits in your living room? You know, I. I'm not like sit your living room and make sure make sure you sign your letter of intent before he left. You know, yeah, that's great. That's you know, I, I, I some people have things to say, but I've never had a really pr- big problem with the guy. Yeah, you yeah. know, I thought he was good. He was a good coach. Well, he treated he, me fair. He put the time in he for put, you. Yeah, he put the time in for me. Flew to Toronto, came to my house, made sure, made sure I signed that thing. You know, so you know, regardless of what anyone s- says about him, I, I have no, I have no. No ends if uh, no gripes at all. Okay, well, let's talk a bit about your college uh, experience, and I don't want to rush you, but we got a lot of sports to cover. Oh, here. I know. Sorry, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I have. That's why I can. If I want to get talking, I can talk all day. For, okay. all, all kinds of stuff. So you played D end. Uh, yes. Oh, I know. I played three technique defensive tackle at Simon Fraser University. So I had like a. Uh, I I played five years there. I was a four year starter. And then I made NAI uh, honorable mention All American my last year. But mm-hmm. again, I wasn't the best player on my team. There was a few pretty, pretty. I played with some real good players uh, across my time. And it, but obviously, I mean, you you got some attention. Like people said, okay, oh, this guy's got some potential. And yes, you yes, move because on. as you know, as I figured out, I was stronger than most people. <laughs> and then and then all of a sudden, I wanted to figure out how to run. I was faster than most people. <laughs> So I was a big, big guy, big, strong kid that can run. So I guess in this sport, it it helps. Now, and I I don't want to harp on this, but did you ever find that because you were Asian that people said, well, maybe this guy, you know, doesn't fit the mold? Yes, I actually had a, I actually had a a experience like this. Uh, Ole Miss called my house one time and then um, they asked me, the coach on the phone, I don't remember who it was. It was the one phone call I got from them. And I'll, I'll never forget it. Uh, they called me and they said, hey, I sent my tape. My tape was kind of, I have a copy of it still. It's kind of blurry. And then I look quite dark in it. So he was like, so uh, is your mother black? And I was like, no. I was like, you Chinese? I was like, yes. And I was like, really? And I, I was 6'3", 250 pounds. And they're like, you're 6'3", 250 pounds? And I was like, yup. It's really? Well, I'm going to have to call you back. And I never got that call back. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah. So I was like, you know, like, and I, I, I'm i not trying to, football has been one of the best sports. I met so many friends, so many what, so many great people through it, but I'm not trying to, um, but it was really weird. I was usually the only Asian kid on my team. Sure. Any level. Actually, sure. no, sorry. I played with Paul Chung in college, but okay. after that, it was just, 
you know, it, it was quite different, quite a different experience for uh, for myself. Yeah, you know, a lot of people, you know, like one of my one of the reasons why my mother kind of was against me playing this sport was like, you know, what you like to watch the sport on TV, but do you ever see a kid? Do you ever see a Chinese kid on that field? I was like, no. So why you watch it? But I've always thought in my mind, I was like, hey, I can be the first one. Sure. sure. And it, you break know, down some barriers. Yeah, break down some barriers. You know, there, because I always say it. I always, I have this always, there is, you can't have second if you don't have the first one. Even if the first one only has a cup of coffee, you know. But again, there's some, at least you have a role model to, not even a role model, somebody to look, look to. Yep. It, it, it's possible. It's possible. So... You had a, a relatively successful college career. Um, you have an opportunity to uh, possibly get drafted uh, into the Canadian Football League. How did that go? Oh, and then the opposite situation happens. I become like a combine stud. <laughs> <laughs> well, which is interesting because obviously you learn from that. Yeah, I learned that Michigan. from my first mistake, yeah. but I ended up having this thing. I need to be bigger, stronger, faster, and I forgot about the other stuff. So it was like this meathead mentality, but I ran real fast. I was like 275, 280 pounds. So I ran four, nine or four, eight, nine or something like that. Ran like a bench press 225. Who knows how many times you saw that? Yeah, like 39, <laughs> at least 39. And then, you know, but forgot I, I need to play football and technique. And, you know, you got to have hard desire. You just not about running real fast and lifting a lot of weight. Yeah, good point. Definitely a good point. And so how when you when you got into the pros, uh, what was your experience there? Well, I guess, you know, I was young and stupid. One thing is like, you know, I, I think a lot of athletes, you know, when things don't work out, sometimes we blame other people. Sure. You know, some people. And then for a long time in my life, I blame everybody else. <laughs> but myself. <laughs> I'm going to be honest. This is just about honesty. So I'm like, and I didn't realize people were trying to help me. And then I just was like, you know, I work hard. I worked hard all the way up. And then I was like, I wasn't even the best player on my team. But all of a sudden, you know, I was a first round pick. I went to the combine. And then all of a sudden, I, you know, your head swells a little bit. Okay. You know, and then all of a sudden, and then I went to training camp. Things were good. Things were going good. My knees started rough, getting rough. A lot of reps. Just a lot more reps and I, uh, smaller rosters and guys were getting hurt. But, you know, like I was taking a lot of reps, but I didn't mind. It was my dream. And then knees didn't feel so hot. I had like some patel tendonitis. And again, I had, and I was too top heavy. I'm going to be honest. I, you know, I, I can blame everybody else on the planet, but I'm sitting there just like thinking back. I was like top heavy. I was like 285 pounds of all chest. Like... And all of a sudden, I couldn't bend. Things were affecting me. And I don't know. Things were just, you know, like, and then I, I picked up long snapping while I was in college. And then, like, you know, once your head goes, you can't do anything, right? Mm -hmm. It's crazy. Like, yep. and I just started bouncing. Around, and then I just shut myself off. Didn't want to talk to people. Didn't want to listen to people anymore. You know, and then when you can't function with your coaches, you can't. You have no confidence, you know, yep. you're, you're done as an athlete. And I'm just going to be, I'm just going to tell you guys, you know, hey, you have problems, fix, go deal with your problems. Don't run away with it. That's with any athlete, you know, hey, mm -hmm. and then uh, being able to bench 500 pounds ain't going to help you. I'm going to tell you that right now. Just, just uh, play, uh, <laughs> play and simple. It, it, it'll help you in a powerlifting competition, but you know, in a real athletic event, sometimes, you know, don't need that. So, and I know I I, under, I understand what what happened in those situations, and then you 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 obviously tried some other things like yes. arena league. Uh, oh yeah, yes, thing. yes. Yeah. I, I remember Derek, you were helping me for that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I ended up trying out for, and then uh, I was bouncing around the, I was bouncing around the CFL. So I went to Cal uh, BC, then coming to Calgary, and then I got cut, and then I was like, oh my god, I was a shock in my life. And then I ended up didn't know what to do. We went to bobsled, and then. After I ended up getting a, a arena league tryout with, uh, actually I flew down on a, to an open tryout, got on a plane, bought a ticket to Colorado, and I got, went to Denver, and I went to an open tryout, 
and then did pretty good. We 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 worked on we worked on it. I ran a five oh eight on a wet <laughs> grass <laughs> like wet like I don't know like maybe three inches long of grass yeah, yeah. wet grass yeah I ran and then I beat a lot of people that day even the skinnier guys yeah because they were like wow so it was pretty uh, so I was proud of myself but again I remember running on that hell altitude one lap and I thought I was gonna die <laughs> literally ran one lap I was like why am I out of gas so yeah that was pretty crazy and then oh and it, and it ended up bringing me into training camp okay for three days. So I had a little trial of that. That's when, I, but I never realized arena, that was my little taste of arena football. But yeah. I never realized it would come back. Yeah, and we'll talk about that. <laughs> yes. But but I want to go back. There was a there was a point there where we, you know, I, I was training uh, with you and uh, I'm like, okay, this guy's really strong. Uh, good good speed for that, that size. But also, um, you know, uh, you you know I was doing some work with bobsleigh at the time and they're like hey we want guys that are strong fast if they're heavy great too so I'm like okay come out for this tryout you did the tryout and they're like yeah we want to take him to Calgary and we want to see what he can do right <laughs> so so I'm like yeah why not eh this chance of a lifetime so tell me about that oh my god yeah so I, I uh, yeah I still remember yeah we remember didn't know what to do and then you told me about this bobsleigh tryout. So it was like, okay. I was like, yeah, maybe I can go to the Olympics. <laughs> Not the best idea. <laughs> I'm going to be honest. It was fun. We went to Calgary, and then we got to learn how to, in the summertime, we got to push bobsleds. Yep. And then learn how to push a bobsled. It was a, quite an interesting experience. And, then and, I, you, and know they what? Did the, you did that indoors, right? Yeah, like, indoors, yeah. yeah. We was going in the summertime. And yep. I, you know what? Crazy things, crazy, crazy things. On that trip, <laughs> hilarious. I'll tell you this. Oh, yeah, okay, yeah, yeah. On that trip. You know who I met? I I met the future. Uh, we we trained with the future Olympic gold medalist, that Kaylee, that blonde hair. Okay. Yeah. Uh, uh, the the Olympic gold medalist. She was only eighteen years old at that at the time. And I ran into Amer uh, America of uh, world champion of uh, skeleton uh, skeleton Katie Ulander. She's still uh, we still talk once in a while. Okay. Yeah, cool. she's world champion now. And I still remember we were talking the other day about how I used to drive her around in my little Pont Pontiac Sunfire during tryouts. And then it was and then I got to meet some on this crazy sports journey. I met an Olympic gold medalist and a world champion. I was like looking back and I was like, "Wow." And then you know obviously you, you see uh, Pierre Luters and yep. people uh, people like that, you know, great Canadian bobsledders. Uh, it didn't work out well so well for me. <laughs> I'm going to be honest. Ah, uh, I can push from the back. I tripped on the right left side. And after, you know, mental blocks, when you almost die on a bobsled track, a practice track, this never happened before, you know. Uh, so what happened? Tell me. I mean, you told me. <laughs> Another funny story. Our practice tracks are like this, a U. So uh, we were pushing from the left side. It was, I always remember. So in bobsled, you push and you run, 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 run. And then when you, as you see the slope go down, you got to, when you're on the side, you got to cross your feet to hit that little plate so um as i crossed my you know you know most sports we don't cross our feet no they tell you don't cross your feet don't cross your feet yeah. but this is against most uh, sports knowledge and when you're running as fast as you can and the sled's coming down and you see this big drop you know you want to get in there pretty quick and then i tripped so it kind of locked me and then all of a sudden it pulled me like superman style i was flying down this ramp like getting pulled and I'm like, ah, oh, my life is over. God damn you, Derek. <laughs> I'm kidding. And then, so I let go. I roll down to the bottom of the hill. Yeah. But the, remember, it's a U. Yeah, the sled goes up the uh, far end. Up, up the far end, it comes back. Comes back, yeah. So I was kind of out on the bottom. <laughs> and then I get up. And I'm just like, huh? And I think this was the first time I realized I had a pretty good chin. Because I was like... I fell out of bobsled, rolled down the hill, and I wasn't, like, knocked out. <laughs> so I decide I get up, and I'm, like, looking up, and then all I see is my coach. Oh, I think it was Matt Hindle. He starts screaming, Bo, watch out! And then I was, like, I'm, like, still groggy. And I look up, and I see, I see him, and then he's, like, watch out! And then I'm, like, look back. Oh, I see the sled coming back. <laughs> I was, like... Oh my god and then i was like what am i gonna do and then this the hill's like this on ice 
I'm like, I don't think I could run up there. And then there's these sidebars, so I decided to jump off the side of refrigeration. I, I, I jumped off the side of the track. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So and then my feet hit the... I thought it was a big drop, but I'm glad I jumped and my feet hit the um, piping. Oh, okay. So I, I lived. <laughs> Fairly. <laughs> But definitely prepared you for your stuntman career. Yeah. yeah. And then I was like, you know, after that, I saw my life flash before my eyes a few times. And then apparently that's never happened in Bob's Life Canada history. Guy crashing. Apparently that's me. Oh, first of many things. But yeah. So that, that was my <laughs> Bob's Life story. But, you know, and then, but here, here's the, here's another interlude. I'm, this is another story I haven't told people about. Yeah. When I was working on Bob's Life, I met, uh, I met the Hart family. So it was a Brett the Hitman Hart's brother. I think it's Bruce Hart. Okay. I I, I don't I don't want to. And he actually I met him in the Olympic facility while we were doing max bench, max squat. So I remember I I close grip bench like four hundred and twenty five pounds that day, and then and I squatted like five hundred pounds and ran like a ran a forty to a uh, sixty meter dash to national standard. And then I was like the guy saw me and he was like hey. Do you want to come meet my dad? I was like, your dad? And he's like, oh, I am. I was like, Hart. I was like, no. I was a wrestling fan since I was a kid. Sure. So I, I ended up meeting Stu Hart. He actually invited me to the Hart house. Okay. So I skipped bobsled practice because I figured I'm not going to do this <laughs> and I'm going to die. So um, I skipped bobsled practice one day and I ran up to the Hart house. And I got to meet Stu Hart in his bedroom a month before he passed away. Wow. And when I, and I swear to God on my life, this happened. And then I never knew this was ever going to come back at me. Sure. But it did. And so I ended up, so you never know what things, these little crazy things happen to you. It's going to bring you later on in your life. Yep. And I got to watch a whole wrestling practice from the dungeon. So in then they got a basement facility. Yeah, so basically the, the house is a big giant house. With like whole many, so, a whole bunch of floors, and there's like wrestlers that live there, and they have a basement facility, old school basement facility that they train at called the dungeon. Wow. So I, I was at the top floor. I met Stu Hart. I shook his hand, and then he was like, I still remember this. He he turned to, he turned to his son, told him to come here, and then he was like, no, in pretty rough shape at the time. Sure. So he he was like. He told him, I, I tell this story, I haven't told this story a lot, but just, I remember him saying, just like, wow. He asked me a few questions. He kind of, just like, you Chinese? I was like, yep. And he's like, you're 6'2? And I was like, no, 6'3. And then I remember he, he asked me, he was like, two, and he grabbed me. And he was like, 250? And I was like, no, 275. And then he was just all excited. You could, you could tell. <laughs> he's and on he, his deathbed. He's yeah, excited he to meet you. Yeah, he was excited. <laughs> he was just like, wow. And then he has, uh, I think it was Bruce, he told him that, oh, I found this guy at bobsled practice. And he used to play for the Calgary Stampeders. Wow. You're and like then, the rock, the Chinese rock. Apparently the, the <laughs> apparently the, the apparently the rock played for the Calgary <laughs> Stampeders yeah, yeah, yeah. too. I don't know. It's hilarious. <laughs> I just thought I never thought things like this would happen, but honestly, swear to God, on my on my life, I lost his phone number, but I wish I still had it till this day. He gave me his phone number, told me to come back, because he's like, "Hey, you can you could be something in this industry." I should have listened to him, but <laughs> I'm stubborn headed, and we'll move on to the next thing. <laughs> so that's the first part of our conversation with Paul Chang. And if you like that, well, hold on to your seats because part two is coming up and there's even more uh, amazing stories. And I think the uh, interesting thing that Paul finished with, he was talking about his potential career in professional wrestling. And what he didn't say in that last story was when he met the Hart family. And he came back and he told me this. He said he spent time with the family and in particular, you know, his, his talk with Stu Hart. And they were actually working in a character for him to develop as part of his, his pro career. So it, it wasn't just, you know, an off chance discussion like, hey, you should be a professional wrestler. 
I mean, they, they started talking about uh, some significant, uh, um, you know, ideas for his career. And, and the, the ironic thing was that they wanted him to be a North Korean wrestler, obviously some kind of villain, but a North Korean wrestler. And his name was going to be New Kim. So Nuke him, you know, Nukem. Uh, and uh, uh, which is interesting because of, you know, what's happening politically now and now that North Korea has nuclear capability, you know, obviously who knows where that would have went. But as we get into part two, uh, you'll even, again, hear more amazing stories from Paul and he's very good at telling them. And, and I really encourage you to uh, continue this journey uh, with Paul Chang and uh, any feedback you have, please contact us at, on Facebook at Strength Power Speed, Strength Power Speed with no vowels, and also on Twitter at Strength Power Speed. And we'll be putting this on YouTube as well and hopefully getting some interesting comments. But uh, amazing fellow, amazing stories, and we look forward to uh, introducing more of Paul Chang to you in part two. Thank you.